Hello there, my name is Will Patillo. I am the instructor for this uh, course and today we're going to be going over some of the fundamentals in programming games in Unity. St uh, right now I'm going through uh, what we'll be creating uh, as of a few lessons in. You see I have a character that I'm controlling. I can turn, strafe, move back, forward, rotate. Uh, I can change camera angles from between first and third person views. Uh, you can see that triggered this, caused the switch to change color. When I press it, that uh, goes away. We'll also have a little bit of AI. Here we have a guard that's moving between several different points. When if it sees me, it chases. I also have some functionality for uh, teleporting around. Um, yeah, another switch. And at, actually, I need to actually get it. And then there's some win-loss conditions. I'm uh, going back to the beginning of the level. I can also die if I'm hit by that uh, guard a frequent number of times. Um, and so uh, let's get into that. I'll be starting off with uh, creating a new Unity project uh, starting from scratch. These lessons are going to be aimed at the absolute beginner in Unity, although they're going to be using some intermediate level concepts. Start by creating a new project. I'm using uh, Unity Hub. And I'm going to call this the Saturday Academy Unity Fundamentals Fundamentals Teaching. And I will just uh, put this in a folder. All right, setting my Unity version. So there's my location, project name, and I'll create the project. Um, and we're back. And now the project is loaded. You got this uh, sample scene. It just creates this by default. Uh, quick bit of navigation. If I press the right mouse button and drag around, I can uh, look around. If I scroll the middle wheel, I can zoom in and out. Um, and if I double click on an object, then it focuses on that. I can zoom in. These uh, icons right here, like this camera and other things, get super annoying all the time. So you can get rid of that by clicking gizmos up here on 3D icons and just unchecking that. Or you can also shrink them by making them really small on this, this slider. I'm uh, just going to get rid of those. And just checking that apparently does not get rid of them. So just shrink it down to nothing. So our goal for today is to create a character that can walk around. Uh, so I'm going to start by giving them some uh, land to walk around on. So I'll start by creating a 3D object and I'm going to go with a plane. And there's my plane right here. I'm going to set this at position 0 right there. <clears throat> And this white doesn't really look like a very good ground, so I'm going to create a uh, material and just make this a nice green color. So I'll start uh, to keep things nice and organized and create a folder. Right click just in this um, assets window, click create folder, and I'm going to rename this to materials. Now, by the way, if you want to rename a folder, you can just uh, select it so that it's blue, press F2, and now I can change the name. So I'm going to go inside of folders by double clicking, right click in this space, and create a new material. And I'm just going to call this uh, grass. And okay, now I click on this color next to albedo, and I'm just going to set it a color. So I'll make it a nice green, and then that's a little bright, so I'm going to drag this down so it looks a little easier on the eye. And this nice dark green right there, kind of see a preview of it. Click the X. Uh, alternatively, I could set these color values directly. And I leave this alpha at 255. Um, otherwise, if I lower it, it, it'll become transparent, as you can see in that right rectangle right here. So I'm going to leave that fully opaque. Click X. Now I'm going to click this grass and drag it over onto the plane. And now it is, I have a nice big green plane that I can move around on. Next, I'm going to create the character. So over here, right click, uh, create 3D object, and I'm going to go with a nice 
capsule. All right, so there is my capsule, and I'm going to lift this up a little bit. Actually, I'll set its x and z to 0, so it's in the middle of the space, and set its y to 1, so it's nice and set right on the ground. Now that I have this capsule in place, I can see this plane isn't really that big for a full-size game. So I'm going to click on this plane, and right here on the scale, I'm going to just increase it uh, 10 times over. So type in 10 for the x, y, and z, and now you can see it's much bigger. Um, by the way, if you want to change the lighting, uh, make it a little brighter or darker, um, you can actually, I'll just select the directional light, press this rotate, so um, click this rotate button up here, and I can move things around, and that kind of changes the direction the light is coming from. So it can have a feel of it, a dusk effect, or, or night, or whatever I want. But for now, I'll just keep it as daytime. Oh, also, by the way, you can um, change the effect also by changing the color of the light. So if I make it kind of an orange, this makes it even more of a sunset kind of feel. But anyway, I like daytime, so just keep it there. Um, by the way, so that's rotating. You can also move objects, so you can type in numbers as we had before. So if I type in 1, it moves over a little bit on the x-axis. I can also press this button, and I can drag it around in the scene using these arrows. Okay, so I created a capsule, and it comes with several things. It comes with a mesh renderer, and a collider, uh, and a mesh filter, and a transform. One thing I want to do right off the bat is to reorganize this a little bit because, you know, for now this capsule is going to work fine for just, you know, teaching and demoing things out, but eventually you're going to want to use more interesting models and you want that transition from your engineering basic art to something more interesting to go seamlessly. So you don't, you want to create an organization uh, where you can swap things out without having to change anything else. So that's what I'm going to deal with right now. So I'm going to click on this capsule. Oh, and first, uh, after it's selected, I'm going to press F2 to rename it, and I'm going to call this the player. Select it again, right click, and create empty. Now this creates a child of this object. Notice how it's indented in this. I can press this arrow and it hides it. Uh, so what that means, so notice the game object is, is right here. Uh, by the way, Control Z goes undoes whatever you, you did last. So one effect of having a child object here is if I move the player around, then this game object moves with it. Now its transform still says 0, 0, 0. That's because this, this transform shows it in relative space. That is where it is relative to its parent. So this is in the exact same position as the player. So therefore, its position is 0, 0, 0, and it's not rotated, so it's there. So for example, if I move the game object over out here, if I move this child out here a little bit, and then I move the player around, now this is still over there, 1.78 on the z-axis away from the player. So I'm going to put that back at the 0. Anyway, I'm going to take this, rename it, and call it the model. And then on the player, uh, first I'm going to click on this little gear icon right here, copy component, click on the model, click on the gear, paste component as new, then same thing here with the mesh renderer, copy the component, paste component as new. Now on this player I can remove that mesh filter and the mesh renderer, and I still have this character. It looks exactly the same as for, before, except that the model is down here. Um, now, another thing I'm going to add to it, and it's part of the reason I'm separating it out this way, is I also want to give it, you know, even though this is engineering art, I want to give this a little bit more of a feel. So I'm going to create another cube and create the eyes of this character so we can see which direction it's facing even if there isn't a whole lot else going on. So I'm going to take this and start by resizing it a little. Uh, so I'll use this scale tool right here and shrink it down a little. 
and then also this way, and then click the move and bring it up. Also, I'm going to resize it, scale the red, shrink it down this way a little bit, and then actually move it out forward. Oh, wait. No, okay, so I want it to be facing forward, and forward is the z-axis, which is blue, so I actually oriented this wrong. So let me uh, go ahead and change that. Scale a little wider on the x, narrower on the z, and then move it forward. Okay. Right there. So it's kind of like it's wearing uh, VR goggles right there. Now to make this a little more interesting, I'm going to create another material. So I'm in my materials folder already. Right click, create a new material, and I'm going to call this goggles. Set the color down to black, so 000, 255. Drag this on here. Okay, and now I got this white capsule with a black goggles that it is wearing. Um, if you like, you could create another material color uh, for the player, but I'm just going to leave it as white for now. Uh, oh, by the way, another uh, scene movement is if you press down on the scroll wheel and drag around, that's how you can pan around in the scene very easily. All right, so I got my player, and I can move him around, and you, again, so you can see this model and cube uh, can move around, moves around with it. All right, so that was some basic scene navigation. On the next video, uh, we're going to be working on creating some uh, scripts that allow this character we just created to move around in the scene. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.